Hello learners, I am Dr. Rekha Sapra. Today we are going to discuss Group Processes Lesson 21 of Senior Secondary Class. After this program, you will be able to describe the concept of groups, understand the functioning of groups, explain the nature of group processes, discuss various stages in group formation, describe types of group and discuss effect of group on individual behavior. The nature of group. When two or more persons interact, we say that a group has formed or come into existence. This is how a group is formed. Some people meet by chance but continue to interact because they find each other's company mutually rewarding. Therefore, each group strives to achieve a goal. The nature of group. More explicit a group is or a goal is greater the interaction and cooperation among the group members. The relationship among group members remains stable or continues for some time. The group has a structure and members think that they are part of a group. The reasons for interaction among persons and forming social relationships are many. For example, students might interact to collaborate for the studies outside the classroom. At the physical level, any collectivity with a purpose can be called a group. Persons possessing certain common characteristics are also conceived to form a group. The most important characteristic of a group is interdependence. It may be related to the behavior and outcome tasks. Interdependence means when we are dependent on somebody else or somebody else is dependent on us. So the main important characteristic of a group is interdependence. The nature of group. The interdependence of behavior refers to the fact that the behavior of one member gives rise to another member's behavior which in turn forces the entire group to perform certain functions. The interdependence of outcomes refers to the fact that each member's outcome is not the result of his or her behavior alone but is also dependent upon the behavior of other members. It also implies shared fate that is the outcome of an event has more or less equal implications for the welfare of every member of the group. Task interdependence refers to the fact that to achieve a goal, group members need to coordinate their activities. For example, in playing football or cricket, coordination of activities of different players is essential for winning the game. They work on the basis of the principle of complementarity. How groups operate? Role. In any group, different members are required to perform different roles. Then we have norms. Each group functions according to certain rules and these rules constitute the norms. In every group, there are different roles that carry a specific rank or standing in the group. Thus, every member has a status in the group. So, this is how a group operates. There are roles, norms and status which make it mandatory for each group to participate or function. The nature of group processes. Why does a person join a group? The most important reason is that a group helps to achieve those goals that one cannot attain individually. And group members have resources, meet the need for security and provide positive social identity. So these are some of the reasons why people wish to join a group. Outcome of group experiences or cohesiveness. Being a member of the group provides satisfaction to the group member. And we all feel very proud of being an Indian or working with a particular organization. Thus, a sense of satisfaction leads to cohesiveness in the group. So this is one of the most important reasons as to why people 
join or group or why people form groups. Now the most important question is how the groups are formed. Initially the first stage is orientation. In this stage a group formation the potential or the would be members make an attempt to assess their gains and losses for working together and interacting over a period of time. This means that when a person feels that their needs are similar to the needs of the other people so they are oriented or they have an inclination towards the other member. So this is stage 1 in group formation that is orientation. In the stage 2 is the focus when individual decides that it is in their interest to form a group to achieve a specific goal their focus gets centered on the means as to how they can achieve that goal. So this is the second important phase of group formation. Next we have regulation. Due to interaction over a longer period of time, a pattern in the social exchange of the group members emerges. The roles and functions of each members are clearly defined. This is regulation. That means that each and every member knows how they are going to operate or what their roles or functions are going to be in the group. And last stage is formalization. During this phase, the norms and roles that emerge during the third stage become formalized. Members of the group, either in writing or in their speech, acknowledge the existence of these rules and show their willingness to comply with them. So these are the four important stages in group formation. Now let's see how many types of groups are there. There are mostly two types of groups, the primary groups and the secondary groups. The primary groups are generally characterized by more or less continued, intimate, face-to-face -face association and cooperation. The most example is of primary group is the family where one can observe close face-to-face -face interactions in family. Such groups are the primary groups. Secondary groups in contrast are special interest groups like membership to the groups is voluntary. One may be a member of a professional group like doctors, engineers, teachers, artists and so forth. The members of these groups do not necessarily have face-to-face -face interaction although there may be direct interactions among them. The effects of groups on individual behavior. So we all know that the groups also interact each other and have an impact on the person. First most important thing is decision making. It has been found that while taking decisions, an individual when left alone takes less risk. On the other hand, when he or she is present in a group, there appears a tendency on the part of the individual to take greater amount of risk. The group as a whole takes greater risks than the individual. This phenomenon is called risky shift. Then comes social facilitation. Social facilitation refers to the influence of the presence of other persons on one's performance. Example, when we are performing an easy task or something which you know very well, there is a possibility that other group members like parents, teachers will evaluate your work, try to show you your best performance. On the other hand, such awareness interferes with your ability to perform when the task is complex and your performance decreases. So what have you learnt? You have been able to understand what are the characteristics of a group, how a group is formed. So in this chapter, we will just briefly outline what you have learned. Persons possessing certain characteristics with a common goal often form a group. A group is a subpopulation within a large population with which individuals may be identified as included and belonging to it. 
Interdependence is an important characteristic of a group. It means that the behavior of one member gives rise to members' behavior. This results in focusing the group to perform in certain ways. Interdependence means the behavior of one person is being influenced by the other and vice versa. People join groups for different reasons because groups are beneficial and group members have resources and responsibilities which can be shared. And you have also learnt that cohesiveness refers to the belief of the individuals that being a member of a particular group would be rewarding. The formation of a group follows four stages which include orientation, focus, regulation and formalization. There are two types of groups, primary and secondary. Group formation has an effect on the individual's behavior like decision making and performance. Dear learners, this was the last point of this topic and I am sure you must have learned something about the group processes, how the groups are formed, how the groups function, what are the characteristics of the group and I am sure you are going to enjoy this topic. Thank you.